Well, we are excited to have you here. And here's just a question that I want you to ponder as you're just jumping into this. What helps you personally stay connected to the Savior? A really big thing for me is prayer and getting to talk to my Heavenly Father. It's really big for me. I think for me it's doing ordinances and partaking of the sacrament and that helps us remember Him. Yeah, go Being ahead. surrounded and immersed by good influences uh, really helps me to stay and do what's right. Also, um, when I read the scriptures, I just, I feel like I get to understand him and it's just amazing, I think. Wonderful. Thanks for sharing that, Laura. Well, let me ask you a different question. The book of Mosiah has this amazing little snapshot of people getting baptized. And here's what that means, that you are willing to mourn with those that mourn Comfort those that stand in need of comfort and to stand as a witness or stand as witnesses of God at all times and in all things and in all places. So as somebody who just got baptized yourself, what does that mean to you? So I think baptism and those covenants that we make are to strive to be like Christ every day and serve others and bring others closer to him. So you just joined the church recently? Yes. Could you tell us that story? Uh, yeah, I'll give you the short story. The missionaries talked to my dad, and my dad said, oh, you should come back and talk to my wife. And so they came back and they shared the first vision. And after that, we just came to church. We um, accepted their invitations one by one until the point where we got to the question, do you want to be baptized? And that was the question that I was pondering for the longest time. Do I really want to be baptized? Is this something that I want to bring and take into my life? And the answer was yes. And my dad got baptized six weeks after us from him having no religion at all before. And to see the spirit work in our lives as a family and his life was just amazing. What a great story. Thank you. Now, how many of you are in a class presidency or a quorum presidency? How has a class presidency or a quorum presidency, how have you showed love? I come from a branch, so our young women's group isn't very large, but in our presidency meetings, um, we have a list of people of concern in our young women's group. And I think it's very important that we have that because some of us may not know that some of these people are in need. And so we try to go out of our way to visit them, to text them, to call them, um, to invite them to activities. And I feel like that's really important to know that people are in need and, and to know how we can help them. That's Thank you for sharing that story. Great story. Well, now let me ask you to think about your friends and family members who aren't members of the church. How do you show love for them? I'd say just being there for them. From reading my scriptures, I've come to understand that we can all shine our lights and we can do that by being a little bit more like the Savior, inviting them to come to church or just sharing the scriptures with them. And I find great joy knowing that it's their decision to make. It's their choice of agency. And although I can't change that choice for them, I can certainly do the best I can through my choices and through really trying to shine my light. And although at times it can just be difficult knowing that they aren't in this covenant path, I know that it's, it's in the Savior's hands. Wonderful, wonderful thoughts. Thank you. Laura, please. I think that the best we can do is respect them for who they are and for who they choose to be. And also just being that light and being a sample of a disciple of Jesus Christ and be clear with them about our beliefs. It doesn't matter if they have, don't have the same beliefs we do. We just have to love them anyways and respect them. Thank you for sharing that. Wonderful. I had a friend where I used to live and I explained to them why I didn't really like swearing around me. And they were very respectful of that. And I'm, one day I had this impression to tell my friend um, about the gospel. And I, he understood why I didn't want him swearing around me. That's a wonderful story. What could you do to share or invite others or what have you done to help people know more about the Savior? A big thing for me is the simple things. 
like even just bringing up the church while you're with someone who may not be a member, I think that plants the seed in their mind and makes them think about it. I think that that can go a long way. So coming to school, uh, I was one of the only members. I told myself, you know, there were certain standards I was going to uphold and the kind of person I wanted to be. And I really liked how all the friends I made, they acted a lot differently around me, which I really appreciated. And, you know, like they wouldn't swear and the, the topics that they talk about. And uh, I noticed that a lot of them, you know, they told me that they, they strive to be as happy as me. And they wondered how, it was, how I was able to go through my days doing it. And so uh, I just thought it was really cool how just by being an example, I was able to have a positive impact on those people's lives. I love that. I'm just kind of wondering how your feelings about temple and family history have been affected by the pandemic. Please. I miss the temple. I have this one name that I never got to use in the temple, and I have it taped to my journal, and just recently I started looking at it more and more, and I just think of her name, and I just think of who she is, and I, I'm so excited that one day I get to help her. Wonderful. There's a sweet question here that we have. It says, how does temple and family history work show love for your ancestors? So for me, I'm a recent convert and I found that as I'm doing family history, I've been able to just learn more about my ancestors and just getting to know them for who they are really brings that joy that although we're not able to go to the temple, we're able to still have that same joy as we do what the Savior has told us to do. Stacy, how long ago did you join the church? I was baptized in August last year. Oh my goodness. Can you tell us that story? Sure. When quarantine started, I quite like wanted to know where my faith was at. And so I met the missionaries online because I applied to get like a free Bible. And I remember when like they introduced Joseph Smith and just his story. Although I didn't know Joseph Smith, I like felt a connection because he wanted to know for himself which church was true. And I wanted to know for myself which church I should join because my family, they were going to a church, but I didn't feel what I felt in this church. And that was the Holy Ghost and know that Heavenly Father loves me and he provided all these things for us so we can come closer to him really was what brought me to being baptized. Wonderful. I'm just amazed at the small and simple things that you're doing to help others feel the love of the Savior through you. The Heavenly Father does work through young people your age, and He loves those people around you who you're blessing, and He'll continue to bless you.